Hey guys, The Woodcraftsman here. So in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating this control panel that I built for my new spray booth and the air makeup system I'm going to be installing here hopefully this spring. Um, I showed a previous video showing it kind of up in operation, um, but then I explained a little bit as far as how it works, but now I actually have it under load where I'm actually going to be powering up the actual fan that came with the spray booth and the actual um, air makeup blower or blower in a box as I call it uh, that I'm using for an air makeup uh, blower for the finish room. So we have the auto manual and high low. So there's two VFDs in here. One VFD is for the spray booth fan. The other VFD is for the air makeup blower. So the high low applies to the spray booth fan. And what high is, it's essentially for spraying, and low is designed for materials flash off or maybe the materials are mixing or agitating at the beginning of the day. The auto manual de determines whether the VFD is running at a constant specific speed um, for the air makeup blower or if it's running at a variable modulated speed via this Dwyer Digihelic DH3. Now this Dwyer Digihelic DH3, what this is, it is a digital manometer that is going to be constantly measuring the static pressure in the room. And it's going to be doing that by comparing the ambient uh, pressure maybe within this side of the building which is not airtight at all compared to the room um, where the spray booth is going to be which is going to be a lot more airtight so it's going to be basically monitoring and modulating that VFD to maintain a specific set point static pressure which might be from 0.02 to 0.06 and it does that via 4 to 20 milliamp signal which is an electrical signal that's widely used on a lot of instruments and VFDs essentially what it does is in a nutshell say for example I'm targeting 0.02 to 0.06 static pressure 0.02 might represent 4 milliamps and 0.06 which is say the highest point I want might res represent um, 20 milliamps so what that means is it's going to send this 4 to 20 milliamp signal to the VFD and depending on how the VFD is set up for minimum and max speed, the VFD is going to modulate based on what the Digihelix says. So the Digihelix says, hey, I'm running at 0.01, the VFD is going to speed up to increase that to at least get to 0.02. So by giving it that 0.04, it's not trying to constantly maintain that specific pressure. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. So that's what this is all about. Um, I will tell you up front that yes, this is a little overkill for what I'm doing, but in a previous video I mentioned as far as um, neutral or uh, negative pressure, neutral pressure, and positive pressure, and why you never really want a negative pressure uh, based on a heating system. And for my heating system, definitely a positive pressure is going to be a much bigger benefit. So that's why I'm doing that. But if you want more information on that, be sure to check out the previous video. I will try to put a card up in the corner here. <laughs> or a link in the description. So um, right now this is set up for automatic and high so this would be essentially that um, if I was ready to spray um, I'm ready to go so if I just push the start button the spray booth fan is running up at full speed and the air makeup blower is on auto and it's modulating to maintain whatever this pre static pressure is um, that I want to maintain. One thing I wanted to point out that I failed to point out was the way this Digihelic works as far as comparing the static pressure um, within the room compared to ambient. There's a couple ports on the back side of this, um, this Digihelic and it comp it's one port is for high pressure, one port is for low pressure. So one of these tubes will get connected to um, uh, a device out here for ambient and then be another one that actually is a little a little screen and like electrical box that's basically pneumatic and that compares um, the pressure within the room and basically it's comparing against the two to see what the room pressure is so that's what these are but I just put these on there just so that there's a tube on there so it had something to measure to but that's what that's all about so that's how it knows what the static pressure is it has a, a um, like I said, a couple tubes in the back that will be comparing high pressure to low pressure. Okay, so if I came in at the beginning of the day, because all my materials are in five gallon pails with the five gallon pail agitator, 
um, I would want to get them mixed up. Now one thing that most any code will require you to have for a spray booth is to have an electrically controlled pneumatic or electrically co controlled solenoid valve for the airline that supplies your spray booth for your equipment that you're using. So rather than run this fan up at a full speed, sucking out all this warm air, um, just to get my materials agitating, I can actually run that on the low flash speed and still have air to the booth to be able to get materials mixing. So that's what this would represent. If I turn this to low, I might turn start on. Now the spray booth fan is running low, say 30 or 40 hertz, whatever that requirement is, but I have air to the booth getting the agitators, get my lacquers or sealers, whichever, mixed up before I'm ready to spray. Once I'm ready to spray, I just switch over to high, and the spray booth fan uh, just speeds back up to its high speed. Now I should point out, when that fan is on low, the air makeup blower will change its speed as well because it'll see that if I'm drawing out less air, the static pressure is gonna go up and it's gonna know that it's going up, so it's gonna send a signal to the, from the, the Dwyer is gonna send a signal to the VFD and actually tell the VFD to slow down because the pressure is getting too high. So the air makeup VFD and this Dwyer Digihelic will constantly maintain that static room pressure no matter what the condition is, unless obviously the fan stops. And I could probably set it up where uh, if that fan stops, the, the pressure gets a certain point and then that thing pretty much stops, but um, there's some things, some fail safes you can set up in there. So that's the one thing I need to add yet is I need to use the um, an output relay off of one of the VFDs um, to control a 24 volt solenoid valve for the air supply to the spray booth. And to do that I think I actually have to change the 24 volt power supply, but that's not a big deal. So um, if again, if I just came in to get materials ready, start the system up, spray booth fans running at a low speed, air makeup fan is blower is doing what it needs to do to maintain static pressure. Once I'm ready to spray, flip over to high, and now we're ready to spray. Once I'm done spraying, I can actually go back to low and use it as a flash off. Um, once I've got that flashed off, if I'm done for the day, I can push the stop, or if I got more parts to spray, just go back to high. That changes the fan speed again. Now, this low and high thing is something that I know that um, Global Finishing Solutions actually offers as an option on their spray booth, and they call it economizer mode. And what they essentially is, is it's tied basically to what they call a gun hanger, which um, is essentially is a limit switch that's um, designed to be an intrinsically safe area or explosion proof. Once you hang your gun on that, on that hook, there's a delay and then your VFD will start slowing down after a certain amount, set amount of time. And then when you take the gun off the hook, it'll basically go back to full speed again. And once you're done, you hang it back on there. After a certain amount of delayed time, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, as it's pulling away the fumes, it'll start slowing down again. So this essentially is doing the same thing. It's kind of economizer for a lower air movement while material's flashing off. But when you're spraying and you need to draw all that overspray away from you, you go back to high. Anyways, that is kind of how this works. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this. I'm going to just give you one last run through. Come in at the beginning of the day. Get materials agitating. After all the solids and everything are mixed in, ready to spray. And now you're basically on high. Once you're done spraying, go back to flash off. Maybe move another cabinet in. Once you get them ready to position, you're ready to spray. Kind of go back. Once you're done spraying, essentially, you can just turn this off. So, again, this isn't something that's really all that elaborate. It's it's actually a very simple system. It's just that one of those things that 
It's not something you're going to find in the hobby shop, and it's not something you're going to find in the really small shop. If, if you have a you know, large booth and an air makeup system, there's a chance that you might actually have something similar to this. But I even know that air makeups aren't really that popular. And it, it, for a lot of people, they have a shop that's not very airtight. And this kind of goes back to, I was talking about the previous video, I was talking about running a negative or positive pressure. This shop is actually pretty airtight. So I don't have the luxury of just opening up a door or window and just pulling all the air. And I actually have to force air into the building so that way it doesn't affect my heating system. I wanted to take a brief minute to explain here as far as how I'm planning on using this inline duct blower as an air makeup system. Essentially, this is just a blower in a box, which is nothing too fancy, but what I'm going to be adding to it is what's going to make it more effective. Because I'm actually moving to hydronic heat or hot water heat to heat the shop, I have a bunch of circulator pumps left over from my dad's business, and I'm actually going to run three to four different zones, and one zone is going to be dedicated to a couple of water to air heat exchangers on the intake side of this air makeup blower, which will help temper the air coming in. Now I won't get an actual 70 or 80 degree temperature rise as you typically find in a gas fired air makeup system. But what I will get is expected to be between a 40 and 60 degree rise depending on the outdoor temperature. Now this type of application isn't that unusual. It's commonly used actually in schools and vocational schools where they don't have the money or the budget to justify an actual gas fired air makeup, but yet they still have a boiler plant or hydronic heat where they can actually run an air to water heat exchanger in typically just an air handler unit that pulls in outdoor air. So this isn't really that uncommon. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it to be somewhat helpful or entertaining, but uh, just kind of wanted to give you a walkthrough as far as how this works. So, all right guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.